हरि ओम तत्सत वेलकम टू स्वामी ज्योतिर्मयानंद सोसाइटी आर जर्नी टू सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन प्लीज सब्सक्राइब आर चैनल फॉर द मिस्टिकल मीनिंग्स एंड टू एंजॉय डेली सत्संग वी आर करेंटली एक्सप्लोरिंग द बुक द मिस्ट्री ऑफ द सोल कथा उपनिषद authored by Swami Jyotirmayananda narrated by myself Swami Nikhilananda so let's get started we will be studying mantra number 12 this self abiding in all beings is hidden due to maya therefore it does not shine forth however those who are endowed with subtle comprehension perceive the reality behind all names and forms The person who lacks the ability to inquire into who am I is unable to discover the self which is the reality behind all names and forms the intellect which is unable to comprehend the transcendental glory of the self due to its association with the ego is a dull intellect all the glory of the world is transient all the name fame money everything we get is temporary therefore the everlasting peace is abides in the self thus it is important to inquire who am i that is the central question it can promote various types of worldly knowledge but cannot tear the veil of ignorance regular intellect worldly intellect it will make you successful but then what after all that the show ends when an aspirant practices vedantic sadhana listening reflection and meditation in sanskrit we call it shravan manan nididhyasana so the study is not completed only by listening then we have to contemplate and then meditate under the guidance of a guru why under the guidance because the scriptures are complex our untrained intellect is not able to discriminate the deeper meaning hidden that has to come from an advanced teacher who is following this path so when the student aspirant sincerely follows it he develops brahma kara vritti the flow of thought towards brahman and that is a big accomplishment because in this material world all our thought waves are generally going to worldly objects so when we successfully turn it inward that is brahmakara vritti but then you have to sustain it not just temporarily it has to be sustainable when the intellect is rid of the pressures of the egoistic complexes and is purified by the increasing impressions of harmony joy peace and expansion generated by the practice of spiritual inquiry it flows towards brahman spontaneously its discerning vision negates the illusions of names and forms and perceives brahman as the only reality behind all that exists so the vision that is developed there sees the magic cuts through the magic and sees the magician and how he is performing his trick that is what we have to do as a project to overcome maya or illusion of maya such an intellect is the sharp and subtle intellect which penetrates the veil of maya and reveals the true nature of the self until this form of intuitive intellect is developed the self does not shine forth in its infinite glory and that tearing of the veil is what we term as self realization because there are no more secrets nothing hidden brahman reveals itself to a sincere aspirant the following mantra gives a general outline of the spiritual practice which enables one to attain self realization and that is mantra number 13 a wise aspirant should allow the senses to be absorbed in the mind he should allow his mind to be absorbed in the intellect that abounds with wisdom 
then he should allow this intellect to merge into the great cosmic self, the mind, greater mind, and the great self into the peaceful Atman. That is the flow of events, the sequence that should be adopted. Yogic movement has four stages and these four stages are explained in this mantra. First, when the mind is unruffled by the senses, this is the first stage. The perfection of Pratyahara, meaning withdrawal of the senses like a turtle, it is also termed Dhamma. Dhamma is control of the senses and it depends upon Shama. Shama is serenity of mind. So if you have serenity of mind, you will not feel agitated and therefore your senses will be more under control. This is figuratively described by the statement, allow the senses to be absorbed in the mind. That is what is meant. Second, when the mind does not dwell upon the objects of the world, one is at the second stage of the yogic movement. When the senses are withdrawn from the objects, the mind may still continue to entertain subtle desires for the objects. Physically, you don't have it, but mentally, you are still thinking of it. However, with the increasing light of spiritual knowledge, these subtle desires too are dissolved. So slowly as we go deeper and deeper to enjoy the nectar of spirituality, automatically the worldly desires start to shrink. Thus the mind becomes absorbed in the light of the intellect. In this stage, an aspirant becomes accomplished at concentration, meditation, and spiritual reflection. He gradually ascends the ladder of meditation and samadhi. Samadhi is when you transcend time and space. You connect with that divine energy. The mind consisting of worldly desires is restrained by the intellect which reveals the futility of all the objects of the world. This is the nature of restraining the mind by the intellect or allowing the mind to be absorbed by the intellect because intellect will guide you properly. But you have to have Brahma Kara Vritti or a Godward mind and then you will be um, more inclined to listen to the intellect, the wisdom that comes from it. Three, when the intellect becomes free from the illusions of the ego self, it unites with the cosmic mind. It rises beyond the limits of human personality and the world in which it abides and communes with the cosmic mind. So you have thinned yourself out to such a beautiful degree that you start to commune with the cosmic consciousness. This is the stage of experiencing Brahmakara Vritti, which means your inner thought waves are now aligned with the cosmic thought waves. A yogi experiences Savikalpa Samadhi. This is the state of increasing subconsciousness, super consciousness, as the fire of wisdom continues to burn down the forest of egoistic impressions. Where do these reside? These egoistic impressions abide in the depths of the chitta or the unconscious within us. At this level, the intellect is absorbed in the cosmic mind. That is the third stage. And finally, when the fire of wisdom in the form of the thought process of Brahman has consumed the forest of karmas or actions, the self is revealed in its fullness. The veil of ignorance is rent asunder. This is the state of nirvikalpa samadhi, the highest form of super consciousness state. This samadhi does not depend upon a mental process. Here, the cosmic mind is absorbed in the Supreme Self. The divinity that abides in the cosmic mind must be meditated upon and worshipped with devotion in order to destroy the veil of ignorance 
that deludes the individual soul so there is this curtain that is the obstacle between you and the self that has to be pierced through your sadhana through your self effort through your discipline when a person develops surrender to the divine self and allows his bodily chariot to be driven by divine krishna he is bound to attain victory over the forces of ignorance hari om tat sat this is swami nikhilananda and we will continue this journey from mantra number 14 in tomorrow satsang om tat sat